Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Jamal Mubarak. We will get started in just a second. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise belongs to Allah, and we praise Allah, and we ask Allah for guidance and forgiveness, and we seek protection in Allah from the malice of our own souls and the evil of our own actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can lead them astray, and whomsoever Allah makes astray, no one can lead them back, lead them back to the right path. I bear witness that there is no other deity but Allah alone, having no associates, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the servant and messenger of Allah. Believers, be mindful of God, speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose, and he will put your deeds right for you and forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys God and his messenger has, will truly achieve a great triumph. Assalamu alaikum, my dear sisters and brothers. So earlier this week, I heard the most amazing story. and it, it was about a new National Geographic documentary called The Rescue. And it tells the story of 12 Thai boys and their soccer coach who were trapped in a flooded cave for 17 days. Now you may remember this event as it happened only a few years ago in um, like June, July of 2018. Now I do recall following the news as the event unfolded, but I had no idea of much of the details. And so basically what had happened is that these boys and their coach had entered a cave to write their names on an inner wall and then leave immediately. While they were inside, um, the cave started to flood quite quickly due to some heavy downpour from the uh, beginning of the monsoon season. And so this flash flood had caused the cave to fill very quickly with water and block the entrance. And so these boys and their coach started to move further into the cave um, to find a dry area and hopefully another exit. They eventually settled on a rock inside the cave, but were now two and a half miles away from the en entrance. And this two and a half mile long path was filled with twists and turns, narrow passages um, and flooded sections, completely flooded. And the water was really dark and muddy and murky. murky. And so there was no way um, for them to escape and there was no way to communicate with the outside world. Um, these boys and their coach were stranded inside the cave for nine days before anyone was able to make contact with them. Nine days in complete darkness with no food, nothing to keep them warm. And on top of this, the oxygen level in the cave was dropping. Now on the outside, their families grieved for those nine days, having no idea if their children were even alive. And once it was confirmed that they were indeed alive, they then were faced with the despair of not knowing if they could be brought out alive. Now, can you imagine the anguish that this brought to the parents of these boys? I'll save you the details of how they were eventually rescued after a grueling eight days because the story is absolutely incredible. And you should definitely look it up, read it, read there's a bunch of articles or better yet, find out where to watch the film. I think it's playing in like some select theaters. So I'm listening to this interview with the two directors of the film and the interviewer, I think it was like a fresh air um, episode on NPR and the interview at, interviewer asks them, um, about how the parents of these kids didn't completely lose it during the course of the 17 day ordeal. And they both responded by talking about the spiritual and faith system of this community. And this occurred in like a Northern part of, of Thailand. They said that a monk had, had come to visit the families, which according to them brought the family's hope. And inside the cave, the coach um, had led the boys in meditation rituals. In fact, um, when a diver finally found, uh, found the boys and, and the coach, he found them in a state of meditation. Now, I was taken quite aback when one of the filmmakers said, quote, who's to say that it wasn't like the parents' prayers that actually saved the children? When all hope was lost, like they still found a place like to pray, end quote. So subhanAllah, hope and prayer could have been the factors that saved these boys and their coach. And it's hope that I want to talk to you, talk about with you all today. And of course, what I'm about to say is a reminder um, for me first and foremost, but may you also find some benefit in this reminder. So um, I came across an article about the Islamic understanding and importance of hope, and I'll share a few elements from that article. But before I get too far into my talk, I just want to clarify that um, according to a very different article, one published um, in Psychology Today, the author defines hope 
as a construct. It exists in both state forms, meaning the hope you have in the present moment about specific things, and trait forms, the hopeful outlook you carry um, more generally in a, in a stable way as part of your own temperament. And so my aim today is to highlight um, ways in which we can increase both forms in our lives by seeking guidance in the teachings of Islam. So back to the first article. The author of this article uh, makes a claim that there are certain deeds that should never be neglected, which affect the heart permanently. Yet some of us, possibly due to weakness in faith, um, we may be careless and not perform them regularly. And so one of these deeds of the heart is to have a constant hope in the kindness, generosity, and favors of Allah. It's not always easy, but we should strive to be optimistic and never lose hope in the bounty of Allah. However, this hope should, not, uh, should be coupled with a reason or means for one to feel that it will be realized. Thus, one should keep performing good deeds that give one the opportunity to harbor hope in the generosity and kindness of Allah. For if these means are not present, then it is mere wishful thinking on one's part. So in other words, it's not enough to just believe that eventually we'll always, that everything will always end up um, in rainbows and chocolate sundaes. You can't just hope to always have hope. It actually takes constant effort and thoughtfulness. Hope is a state of mental optimism, but it requires active mental exercises to realize and maintain it. Hope is not for a person who is lazy and does not endeavor to remain upon the path of those who strive and exert great efforts. Such a person is just like someone who wants to grow plants and see them bear fruit without bothering to cultivate or water the seeds. Is this person equal to another who digs the soil, plants the seeds, water them carefully and regularly? Only the latter can realistically hope that his plants will grow fruitful. This is also the case regarding hope for the bestower of mercy and bounty, for the bestowal of mercy and bounty of Allah. Um, in Surah Al-Nisa, verse 123, Allah says, um, paradise is not obtained by your wishful thinking, nor by that of the people of, strict, of scripture. Moreover, it was said, faith is not wishful thinking, but rather it is what is instilled in the heart and proven by good deeds. So hope is necessary for those who are um, heading towards Allah, because if a devout worshiper loses hope, then they are headed for ruin. A sincere Muslim hopes that Allah will forgive their sins and that Allah will enable them to rectify a fault in themselves. They hope that Allah accepts their good deeds and hope and hopes to draw closer to Allah. Thus, hope is one of the most important means that one must possess in order to continue their journey towards Allah with steadfastness, especially as we are so very aware of all the trials and tribulations in the world we now live in. Hope is a means of steadfastness. It is the complete opposite of despair. And to feel despair is to give up on the mercy of Allah, the Almighty, which is a sin in of itself. As Allah says in the Quran, in, in the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, verse 87, quote, and do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for no one loses hope in Allah's mercy except those with no faith. This was the advice of Prophet Yaqub, may Allah exalt his mention, to his sons. So how does one achieve hope? By remembering the favors of Allah on you, by remembering the promise of great rewards from Allah, and remembering his generosity and kindness towards his creation, especially when we do not even ask for them and at times are unworthy of receiving them. By remembering the bounties of Allah with regards to one's faith, body, and life in general. By remembering the great mercy of Allah and his mercy precedes his wrath, and that he is entirely merciful, be especially merciful, that he is kind and compassionate. Thus, acquiring hope in Allah can be achieved by knowing the names and attributes of Allah. So let us take these elements with us to our prayers, to our meditations, and our dhikrs, so that they stay with us throughout the day. We, will, we all carry moments of optimism and pessimism in our personalities, but maybe through these exercises, we are able to decrease the moments of pessimism and replace it with more moments of optimism. These are just a few ways to improve our mental health so that we can be better versions of ourselves. It's through the remembrance of Allah and the doing of good deeds that we can bring peace to our heart. 
Now, going back to the story of the Thai boys, it was through prayer and having hope in the power of the Almighty that allowed everyone to remain, to remain calm and collected. They channeled their despair in a very dire situation into hope that Allah was the one in control and the one who could bring the boys home safely. Turning to God when we have no control in a situation can be a very powerful thing. But how much more powerful can it be when we turn to God when we feel we do have control of the situation or outcome? You're driving your car, it's the middle of the day, weather is good, traffic is light. Are you in control of arriving home safely? Do we remember to have hope in Allah when we arrive safely, that, that we will arrive safely? Maybe that thought doesn't even cross your mind. Or you've got a project for work or a khutbah to write. You've got all the materials lined up and you have a plan of action. Are you confident that you will finish it on time? Or do you also have hope that Allah will guide you in, this, in success? Just remembering to have hope that Allah will protect you and guide you in life, even when it seems like a cakewalk, is contributing to achieving that mental state of optimism. We often turn to God when we are pushed to, but we must also work on turning to God when there is nothing pushing us to do so. I say these words of mine and I ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. My thanks and gratitude belong to Allah, the Lord of all mankind. And I ask Allah to, blow, to bless and bestow peace on the Prophet Muhammad. So the first part of this talk was focused on the spiritual benefit of being in a mental state of optimism by having hope in Allah. And now I want to briefly highlight the physical benefits of having hope or being in an optimistic mental state. Um, I am again referencing um, a piece that I found in psychology today. So did you know that hope can reduce physical pain? Several studies have shown that those who have higher dispositional or trait hope have lower perceptions of pain. This could be in part because people with higher hope are less likely to catastrophize about pain, which in turn diminishes its mental hold on them. And when pain seems less powerful cognitively, it takes up less of your attention, allowing you to view it as less debilitating. The perception of pain is a classic example of a process that seems objective and physiological, but instead has much more to do with our emotional and cognitive interpretation. Being hopeful may also boost circulation and respiration. Hope, optimism, and a positive outlook in general have been associated with protection against chronic illness. This may be in part because the absence of depression or chronic negative emotions is important in its own right. We know that, though, that those can be detrimental to overall health. It could also be that people who are more hopeful and optimistic are more likely to engage in positive health behaviors and take better care of themselves. That said, it is still strongly suggested that hope in and of itself has a positive effect on physiological processes like circulation and respiration, most likely because of its stress reduction properties, which in turn help keep the nervous system from being overtaxed. Optimism improves cardiovascular health. The data is convincing. Optimism is good for your health. Large scale meta-analysis have shown that an optimistic outlook reduces your risk of heart attack. And the data is so significant that, it, that many cardiovascular experts believe that improving mental health um, outlook is crucial, is a crucial part of preventative treatment for heart disease. The connection should not be, um, should be, should not be considered surprising given that the stress response, a direct link between emotional health and physical health, plays such an important role in long-term healthcare. Another factor in this connection is blood pressure. Hope and optimism can have positive effects on blood pressure, boosting treatment efforts for hypertension. Uh, when blood pressure is managed and maintained within healthier levels, the benefits extend beyond your health, helping prevent your risk of stroke as well. So as you observe your thoughts during stressful times, try to catch yourself thinking um, that, try to catch yourself in thinking that is unduly catastrophic. Make a plan to manage your, any anxiety on a daily basis in ways that help you feel more in control or have more hope in, in Allah and increase your sense of predictability and controllability. So finally, going off of a point that Amr mentioned in his khutbah last week, be mindful of who you surround yourself with. Do you find yourself spending time with people who increase your hopeful um, 
or optimistic outlook or, or who bring it down. And keep in mind that it's good for your mental, physical, and spiritual health to have persistent hope in how you see your life, the world we live in, and inshallah, the life to come after we leave this one. I ask Allah to please accept our deeds, forgive our shortcomings and missteps, and allow us to experience much more hope together. O oh Allah, grant us the good things in this world and the good things in the next life and save us from the punishment of the fire. O oh Allah, aid us in accepting the tests and tribulations of this life and give us the strength to overcome any challenge we may face. O oh Allah, we hope um, for your mercy. Do not leave, leave us for, for, to ourselves for even a blinking of an eye. Correct each of our affairs for us. There is none worthy of worship but you. And if I have said anything of truth, that is from Allah alone, and my gratitude goes to Allah. And if I had said anything not of truth, then that was from my own ego, and I ask forgiveness for my transgression. Amen.